we have come to section five in our study. If you remember the four sections that we had discussed was basically about God, the triune God, and then we went into individual studies of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that makes up the triune God. And I think as we move to section five, it's a natural transition to uh, God as uh, we understand from scripture and we talk about kingdom of God. So I think uh, they are sort of connected and I feel it's a good, it will be like a continuation of helping to us to understand uh, who uh, our God is. Now, before we actually read the booklet, and there are uh, four questions we can read. Uh, I want to set the stage by some making some basic thoughts. Uh, I feel that the booklet probably didn't fully capture all of that. Uh, it is it sort of assumes certain things, and I didn't want to go into the booklet with those assumptions. And you might not know exactly what we are talking about. So I want to go back to some very basic thoughts. And for that, Praveen, uh, I'm going to share my screen. If you can uh, let me do that. And then I will uh, go according to the slides that I've prepared for you. OK, give me uh, just a moment as I share my screen with you. Okay. All right. Uh, I hope you can all see that screen. I introduced the, this today's discussion as section five, the kingdom of God. Like I said, we need to look at some basic uh, precepts before we delve into uh, some of the discussions in the booklet. Uh, if you notice on the screen, I have the first screen, I'm going to discuss some misnomers or uh, misunderstandings, uh, some erroneous thoughts about the kingdom, because when we talk about kingdom, uh, we are automatically our mind tunes to certain uh, preconceived notions. For example, we might think that the kingdom <coughs> is a physical nation or empire, because we are so used to these kinds of concepts, with a king, with rules, with territory, maybe armies, economies. And so we default to that kind of a notion about a kingdom. Uh, now you will know that even the Jews looked at the kingdom as a nation. They wanted to restore a nation, a, a Jewish nation. Right, and they were coming from the very concept of Israel being a nation. God called Israel to be a nation, and of course, separate from the others. And so, we might think that when the Bible discusses kingdom of God, we are fundamentally or basically talking about a nation with a territory and with king and rules and subjects and all of those things. We might even go to the point of thinking that it's a theocracy. In other words, uh, God is the king and he's got rules and he's got a territory. And then he is, uh, you know, just like in Israel, there were armies and, in, and, and an economy. This is not what the Bible or Jesus tells us about the kingdom as we understand kingdom of God to be in the scriptures. Now, some people. And I know a few who think that uh, trying to understand the kingdom from this perspective, even go to the extent of thinking that we must have a Christian nation here on this earth. And all the Christians must come into that nation and that will become the kingdom. And that, of course, is uh, completely a negation of what the Bible actually says. So this is a misunderstanding. And there is a second one. And that can be that some people think that when it talks about the kingdom of God, it's a heavenly kingdom where you have God 
may be sitting on a throne and the archangels or the cherubs surrounding him and the angels doing his work and uh, they tend to think of a kingdom from a heavenly reality uh, you know when when we talk about heaven we we use these words very uh, uh, i mean to say very often like going to heaven uh, and we think that salvation is going to heaven we will become angels maybe we will have wings uh, and some may even think that we will play the harp for all eternity uh, so these are thoughts that come to mind but once again uh, the the way the bible defines the kingdom is not necessarily describing this kind of a reality even though there is god and uh, you know the bible talks about god on a throne there are archangels and cherubs and angels so but kingdom of god is much much more than all of this so let us first of all recognize the benefit when we talk about the kingdom of god we are we need to recognize the centrality of jesus christ in other words we understand this kingdom through jesus christ he is the one he is the great Re revelator uh, he is the great revelation and he is come to reveal and so jesus christ becomes uh, like we would say a lens through which we can see some of these realities being described we talk about jesus being the center or you could say the center of the center we talk about christocentric and so uh, we have to see all of these realities from or uh, the lens of jesus christ so let me make a few statements which i have uh, actually borrowed from uh, gary dedo who is a uh, who is our resident theologian uh, who helps us you know formulate our theological perspectives and uh, he makes some very interesting statements let me see if i can help you understand the kingdom from this perspective first and foremost jesus christ himself embodies and brings the kingdom notice not only that he brings the kingdom he announces the kingdom we need to understand he he himself embodies it right uh, he, without him the kingdom has no meaning uh, he himself is the you could say the essence of the kingdom okay so that's one thing we need to keep in mind secondly the kingdom of god should be identified with the person and mission of jesus christ right the person of jesus uh, reveals a great deal with regards to what the kingdom is like because it is in the person of jesus we understand how a, how this kingdom functions and operates because in jesus christ's mission uh, in the incarnation we begin to see how the kingdom begins to play out here on the earth okay so that is another thing that we need to keep in mind a third point is that the kingdom he that is jesus offers has a character identical to his own notice the word character right uh, it it aligns with his character how 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 he thinks and what his values are and what he feels is important so the kingdom has much more rather we are discussing much more than just territory just you know some kind of rules but we are talking about a literal character of the kingdom and it is identical to christ's own character and his values now here is an important statement for us to keep in mind whatever or rather it says wherever christ's lordship is operating according to his will and purpose there is found the kingdom of god so the kingdom of god is basically christ's reign his lordship his uh, his very presence ushers the kingdom his presence brings the kingdom right so we don't have to look for a territory or a piece of land you know in terms of a kingdom but once again jesus christ you know is the very essence of the kingdom let me give you one more thought 
as we move to the next slide more particularly it says his kingdom must have to do with his redemptive purpose purposes and so be bound up with his incarnation vicarious life crucifixion resurrection ascension and return for us and for our salvation notice all that jesus does is an aspect of the kingdom of god the kingdom of god unfolds in the very mission and purpose and actions of jesus christ so when we talk about the kingdom you cannot remove jesus from there jesus is the one who is the very visible uh, aspect of the kingdom and so the kingdom of god is identified with god's very purpose for us in jesus christ so these are some introductory thoughts i wanted to make let's look at some more thoughts uh, what is christ's purpose we just discussed that the kingdom is very intrinsically connected with the purpose god has for us in other words his purpose is his kingdom where we can live in his purpose is what uh, god wants us to embrace and to live inside of and so we can ask the question what is christ's purpose and uh, let me make two more comments here uh, the purpose of his rule uh, and will is to bring his creation into and under his gracious protection and uh, beneficence that is into fellowship communion and participation with him by reconciling us to god through his self offering so in a nutshell you could begin to see all that is being said there uh, that the kingdom has a much broader definition so what is christ's purpose for us the very purpose of the entire creation is to be under god's loving gracious protection and beneficence in other words uh, the creation uh, was was well, I mean, it came into existence for enjoying his loving beneficence, whatever his blessings are, whatever his grace has to offer. And this is done in the fellowship and in the communion and the participation with him uh, in the reconciliation that God brings in Christ through his offering. So the kingdom uh, is basically enjoying Christ. In, his, in him through the fellowship that he allows us to participate in. And so uh, in one sense, the kingdom has a participatory element to it. Unless we participate with Christ, we don't experience the kingdom. So the kingdom is not stepping into some, you know, some territory and think that you're in the kingdom. No, you can be in the kingdom only if you participate in the life of Jesus. So you could say for that, to that extent, the kingdom of God is the very life of Jesus, which he offers to us. So you begin to see how the kingdom of God is so much more larger. And we'll go through some scriptures to see that. Let me make one more comment in this slide. It says the kingdom of God is a fellowship, a people, a community in communion with God through Jesus Christ. And so with each other in the spirit of Jesus Christ. So the whole loving, unifying work that God is doing, uh, you know, in Christ is his kingdom. That is kingdom work. And what we do in relationship with God and with each other is the kingdom. So in one sense, you could say right now, right now, we are participating in God's kingdom. <laughs> if I can use, if I can say that. We are participating with Jesus Christ, you know, in kingdom activity. So we are being ushered into a kingdom reality, even as we discuss and engage in a Bible study like this. Uh, you could say that we participate in the kingdom or we experience in the kingdom in what we do as a church. You know, uh, everything that we do as a church in the church when we gather as a church uh, and as we come as a church 
because we are the temple of God. We are actually being ushered into the very kingdom. I want to make an important point here. And uh, uh, in case you have any doubts or questions about it, feel free to let me know and then we can discuss that further. But I want to make a statement which might be a little shocking. And that is this, that uh, the church is not the kingdom. Okay. The church is not the kingdom. The church engages in kingdom work, right? Uh, why do I say the church is not the kingdom? Um, remember, God's kingdom, the kingdom of God is a perfect reality. Is the church perfect today? Well, at least not yet, right? Uh, the church is basically subjects for the kingdom, right? Or of the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom includes us. So in one sense, we are part of the kingdom. Uh, the church proclaims the kingdom. So, right? We don't proclaim the church. We don't, we don't go preaching uh, the church. But we, we preach the kingdom of God. So, to that extent, the church maybe overlaps with the kingdom. But it's not fully realized. So, to that extent, uh, we should not be confused to think that the church now is the kingdom of God on the earth. Not necessarily. Uh, it is a work that is progressing, obviously. Uh, maybe there is an overlap. Yes, as a church, we are experiencing the kingdom, but the kingdom is much, much larger, much bigger than the church as we see it here on the earth today. So having said all of this, uh, the question is, how then do we understand? Let me put the next slide. How should we understand the kingdom? And maybe I will use uh, a few thoughts here and then get into some scriptures. Basically, it's a spiritual relational reality. The kingdom of God primarily is a spiritual relational reality. A spiritual where we, where we engage in a spiritual, uh, what do you say? Uh, activity, uh, just like what we are doing now, uh, where we enjoy the presence of God in prayer, uh, in fellowship, uh, and in relationship with one another, the kingdom, this is what the kingdom primarily is. Okay. Now let me look into some scripture, and we will go to uh, Matthew 12, just a few thoughts where Jesus Christ talks about the kingdom. In Matthew 12, verse 28, it says, But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Uh, if you remember, this is uh, the context here is Jesus was being accused of driving out demons in the name of Beelzebub or through the power of Beelzebub, which was basically a principle you know, principally Satan, I would think. And, but Jesus says that it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons. And if he is doing this, if he is doing that here on the earth in his earthly ministry, he is saying the kingdom of God has come upon you. Interesting, isn't it? You could say that when we, when evil is expelled, when we move away from evil, when we allow, not allow evil to influence us or, or control us, we are experiencing the kingdom. Or you could say the kingdom is present. The kingdom is come, coming upon us. And so look at how, how Jesus is explaining the kingdom. And this will tell us that the kingdom is much larger than just, you know, piece of land and territory and empire and nation. The kingdom has a much deeper relevance and reality for us in our lives. So the kingdom is coming upon us even as we experience the deliverance and the redemption from evil. In uh, Matthew 21, uh, verse 31, it says, and I think uh, uh, later part of verse 31, it says, Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. 
Notice, entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Once again, the context is the Pharisees were finding it difficult to believe in Jesus and what he was teaching, right? And then, so Jesus, uh, in answer to some of those questions that they were, uh, so objections they had about Jesus was telling them that the tax collectors and the prostitutes, I mean, these are people who are outcast. They were considered outcasts. They were not allowed any kind of, you know, privilege in the, among the Jewish uh, perspectives, right? But Jesus says they are entering uh, the kingdom of God ahead of you. How do you enter the kingdom of God? Well, how is Jesus saying we enter the kingdom? Is it by moving into a, a nation or a territory? No, it is through belief in him. He is saying that these people, tax collectors and pro prostitutes, are believing in Jesus and thus entering the kingdom. So you enter the kingdom by believing and repenting. It is not by, by a location. You don't enter, a, enter the kingdom of God in, through a location. But you allow the kingdom of God, or you say you enter the kingdom of God by allowing God's influence in our lives and his reign in our lives. And we reciprocate by belief, repenting, and accept, acceptance of, the, of uh, the kingdom into our lives. And so you notice how Jesus is explaining the kingdom. And I, and I feel that this really, I'm sure, uh, expands our whole perspective of the kingdom, isn't it? It is not just something that we are waiting for in one sense, uh, you know, for a thousand years, uh, which we used to talk about. And of course, there are, I mean, there, those are all absolutely true, but I hope that you begin to see how the kingdom begins to make so much more sense uh, in its spiritual and relational reality. Let me look at two more scriptures. Uh, and the next one is Luke chapter 17. Verse 20, it says, Once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, Here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. And of course, this is one of those verses that has been debated many a times. Uh, we used to talk about it and we used to wonder what it means. Uh, but there are something very clear there. Jesus is saying the coming of the kingdom is not something that is, uh, that is observed or that can be observed. In other words, it's not necessarily a physical entity. It is not something that we you know, physically enter into. But there is a spiritual reality about the kingdom. And what is that? Accepting Jesus is the kingdom. Why? Because he, being in their midst, is the very representative of the kingdom. He is the very one who says the kingdom is at hand. He is the one who brings the kingdom. With his coming, he is bringing the kingdom. So his incarnation, in one sense, is the kingdom of God here on the earth. Uh, and of course, his continuing presence shows that. We have entered into the kingdom. So the kingdom of God cannot be separated from our faith in Jesus. The kingdom of God is not something that we can experience without placing our faith in Jesus. And that is very important. So Jesus is basically trying to say that uh, it is much more than just a physical reality or an entity. Look at uh, Mark chapter 1. Of course, a very familiar scripture to all of us as Jesus was beginning his ministry. He says, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. Uh, 
Jesus basically is saying, uh, this is the gospel. The gospel is that the kingdom has now come in Jesus, and he is bringing that, that reality into all our lives, right? Uh, by, with, his, with his presence on the earth, the kingdom indeed has come near. And that is the good news. And of course, what do we believe about Jesus? He came to redeem. He came to live a vicarious life for us. He came to uh, die for us. And of course, in his resurrection, all of humanity has been raised to life. And in his ascension, he has now reconciled us to the Father, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you could say. and of course, there is a second coming, which we will talk about in just a moment. But this is the, the when you when you look at the kingdom from this perspective that we have been discussed so far, all of these scriptures make tremendous sense. And it is not something that we are looking for somewhere in the distant future uh, in terms of a physical kingdom and a nation. I have one more slide to go through and uh, just a few more thoughts and then we will stop for some questions. Is the kingdom only a future reality or is it a present and a future reality? This is another important element that we need to understand about the kingdom. Lots of people talk about, oh, the, 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 the kingdom uh, is, you know, is past or present or future many people believe it's only a future reality okay but how do we understand it from uh, what we have discussed so far uh, first and foremost we need to realize that it is only in jesus christ we can understand this whole concept of the kingdom uh, it is he who ushered us into the kingdom or rather you could say rescued us and brought the kingdom into our lives uh, you could say, when you talk about present and future, we let's put it this way. In the incarnation, the kingdom was inaugurated. All right. That is when Jesus came to the earth as and took on flesh, lived his life as a human. He was when he was the God man, fully God and fully man here on the earth. The kingdom in one sense was inaugurated because Jesus has now united humanity into his humanity and of course we know the progression that un that unity is of course going to result in a fellowship even with the triune god right so the kingdom in one sense is inaugurated uh in the incarnation of jesus but there is a future reality and that is we would say at his second coming it will be consummated in other words we will experience it in its fullness that is only at his second coming we don't experience it in its fullness now and let me look at some scriptures to explain this uh, one is found in galatians chapter one where it says grace and peace to you from god our father and the lord jesus christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. Now, note those few words and we'll come back to it in a moment. Let me finish the thought. According to the will of our God and Father, to whom the glory forever, to whom be glory forever and ever. Notice, Jesus in his humanity has, you know, rescued us, uh, of course, from this present evil age. So there is an, a present age that we are experiencing. And this present age is evil. Okay. Uh, so that is why we have problems, difficulties. So many issues. We suffer. We go through death. Uh, because it, the, a present evil age is something that we are still experiencing. But in this present evil age, he has already rescued us through his humanity, through his death, resurrection, you know, and ascension. 
there is a rescue there is a redemption that we we can experience so the kingdom is both present and future we have been rescued from our sins that is the present kingdom or the present uh, uh, aspect of the kingdom of god which we have already ushered into we have already entered but there is also a future let me look, let me go to romans chapter 8 and we will see that verse 23 romans 28 says not only so but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship the redemption of our bodies so you look at the future reality the future reality is we we will experience the fullness of the adoption when our bodies are redeemed uh, when our bodies are glorified and we are given glorified bodies but until then we groan inwardly and we have to wait eagerly as the apostle writes there uh, and so it's interesting he talks about the first fruits of the spirit we who have the first fruits of the spirit in other words we are experiencing experiencing the kingdom like the first fruits but there is a future harvest the fullness of the harvest is still future so right now we are only experiencing the first fruits and so until then there is a suffering we go through there is a groaning inwardly we are waiting eagerly until the full redemption of our bodies takes place and we experience the fullness of that adoption into uh, jesus christ into sonship you know where we can experience the fullness of uh, father son holy spirit the love the unity the dynamic uh, relational you know uh, dance that goes on in the unity you know in the trinity we can experience that so let me end with one more thought here so that's the reason why we say the kingdom of god is now but not yet there is a present element to it but uh, the fullness of it is still future so we we have already entered into the kingdom but we are only experiencing experiencing the first fruits of it the future is still uh, at the second coming and at that second coming you know when jesus christ returns uh we will all be resurrected those who are dead and those who are alive will be given a new body and we can uh enter into you could say the fullness of the kingdom of god all right so um uh, we have 15 minutes left let's just stop for a few thoughts questions and answers and uh, or any other discussion any other thoughts you might like to bring and uh if necessary then what we can do is continue with some of these uh questions in the booklet uh next time okay so let me open uh, let me stop sharing here okay. all right we're all back what are your thoughts on this I know Mr. Rao is uh, having a smile on his face. <laughs> some of the things to ask something. Yeah, some of the things we have we have always talked about the the kingdom is completely <laughs> I could say expanded, right, Mr. Rao? Yes, yeah, sir. Some some questions I had, but uh, that was answered in your uh, uh, sermon. I oh, think. wonderful! <laughs> Excellent, right? It's very good to see you Bertie. Uh I'm glad that you can join us. And you're looking and you're looking all right. I'm glad for that. We praise God for that. How are you doing Bertie? Go ahead Bertie, you had you had a comment?
I hope you can hear us. Yeah, I just wanted to make two comments from uh, yes. what you said. Number one is uh, uh, what you have explained is really very beautiful. Uh, uh, it gives us a, it, it puts us on a right perspective to interpret the parables basically. Uh, most of the parables, as, in fact, if you read the parables, none of those parables start uh, saying like the kingdom of God will be having these and qualities. But most of those parables are like this. The kingdom of God is like a man. The kingdom of God is like a woman who have uh, 10 coins. The kingdom of God is like a man who got 100 sheep. Kingdom of God is like a man who has a vineyard. A vineyard. So most of those things, the kingdom of God was pointed to your person. Uh, one beautiful point you have brought forth is the kingdom of God is not just a system. Uh, like uh, world, world systems uh, which we have presently democrats or republic or whoever but the kingdom of god it is not even a monarchy it says uh, you said the kingdom of god is a person jesus himself is the kingdom of god so this uh, this uh, this sets <coughs> a very good uh, stage and platform for uh, for us uh, which helps us to interpret the parables so I encourage as one of the Bible uh, students, you know, taking this perspective, let us read the parables again. Mm -hmm. They make a different sense to us now. So that is one thing. And the second point I would like to make here uh, is also, of course, I go along with uh, what you have said, an additional thought to it. Uh, if you read the entire scripture in a narrative mode, uh, like a, from Genesis till Revelation as a narrative, as a one story. Uh, we and we come to understand like, you know, there were times uh, uh, in each era, there were different kinds of governments. In each era, there were different kinds of focuses. In the, during the Genesis time, we don't have the focus of kingdom. The focus of kingdom comes after David comes into the picture. And it continues and it, because it takes a greater height uh during the exile from exile onwards it becomes even more serious concern especially uh, for the children of israel so from exile onwards they were desperately looking for their own their own kingdom that is the reason many of the scriptures were explained in in the language of in, in kingdom language so they will keep saying about god's kingdom is going to come or that's what kingdom of god or kingdom of heaven is going to come so prophets were continuously preaching. John came and preached to be uh, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus came and preached repent for the kingdom of God is at hand because these two also are the preachers of the Old Testament, and these two are also preachers to the children of, to, to the Israelites. Basically, that is the reason they were preaching the kingdom of God. None of the apostles and apostles went and preached uh, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. They preached a different message altogether. So what we are trying to say is the kingdom of God, the concept of kingdom of God, uh, if you read in a narrative form or historical form in the Bible, if you read the entire narration in the scripture, we understand it was limited. So, and at the same time, people made it, uh, people concised it. Uh, kingdom of God is limited to certain group of people and especially Israelites made it so, uh, uh special only for them the kingdom of god is only for jewish people that's what the picture they made so and jesus and john were preaching to them so they used the language so that they can get connected <coughs> excuse me apostles did not preach that because they encountered even a greater reality when the holy spirit came upon them so till the gospel time which is old we can we can consider as old testament times the kingdom of god was specially spoken from apostle time the greater reality has been explained that is jesus uh, jesus himself is the kingdom of god he came and he dwelt with us he we are united he is our god and we are his people we are totally united that is the reality god was in christ reconciling the entire world unto himself not counting their trespasses against them. He reconciled, he united humanity and divinity in Jesus Christ. That is a greater reality uh, Apostle Paul encountered, like, you know, he writes in Colossians, 
uh, the mystery which was hidden from ages to ages now it is revealed to the uh, apostles which is Christ in us the hope of glory in Ephesians he writes we in Christ so we in him he in us it is the greater mystery and reality apostles encountered so for them it is much bigger than any kingdom aspects kingdom thing mm -hmm. so that's the reason they were preaching the gospel they did not preach kingdom and even book of revelation doesn't end with god ruling the <laughs> ruling kingdoms or making christians or church as a kingdom the nation of uh, sorry the book of revelation it, it breaks down all the walls of kingdoms and it says the all the people of the world all nations all linguistic people are going to be there and god is going to be with them and he he says they are my people and he is their god they are becoming one family they, they are going to stay together and experience the unity and oneness and the relationship so there was a journey taken place in human life where uh, we all have gone through the some kind of monarchy some kind of kingdom aspects in our heads but god has taken entire church into the greater reality than kingdom which pastor said uh, church is not the kingdom of god uh, you know that's a great truth actually we need to realize we are not looking only for his kingdom because greater reality has been revealed to us and uh, we are partakers of it and we are the promoters of it and propagators of it such a great privilege god had given to us and we need to realize it so these are one of the few comments I would like to make, especially in terms of kingdom of God. We are yeah. not here to establish his kingdom. We cannot do that. He did it. We are here because we are we are not even agents of a kingdom. We are agents of a great truth that God has united us with him. I think uh, uh, two very important points you made, and especially the first one when you talked about uh, how the parables becomes so much more, uh, you know, uh, uh, we understand the depth of the meaning of those parables, uh, especially the kingdom parables. So maybe if you read the parables again from this perspective, uh, that will be a great revelation. And uh, this reminds me of another scripture, and that is, uh, maybe we'll discuss it next time. Jesus said the kingdom uh, of God is not from this world or not of this world so uh, once again he's helping us to understand there is a much larger perspective to this kingdom uh, rather than looking at it from the narrow uh, uh, perspective of the kingdoms of this world uh, the way the kingdom operates the reality of the kingdom is very different from the typical understanding that people have about kingdom from our human perspective so, uh, yeah, the good thoughts. I think uh, we need to incorporate them into uh, our understanding. Any other thoughts? Shanti, you have a thought? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I wanted to bring about uh, that verse in Ephesians 1, where it talks about Christ being the head of the church. And, I mean, we, we are called the body of Christ or his bride but we are called to proclaim the good news of his coming of this kingdom yes that's what the word says so we are his bride but we are called specifically so that we can proclaim that good news of his coming kingdom so when we sing of sing of songs like this you know righteousness peace joy in the holy ghost and that's the kingdom of god when we look at it in in this perspective it makes us understand more that this is the church or rather what we enjoy now whether it is that peace whether it is that love whether it is that understanding and mutual respect that is just a glimpse of what is to come or what will happen rather the fullness of it when it comes uh in 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 later when when the lord comes back when jesus comes again so um very important to 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 know and understand that the church is not the kingdom of God. We are his bride. What we see now and enjoy is a glimpse. Rather, it is still in the process of it. Yes, I think uh, 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 that's another crucial point. You know, this uh, uh, and, and uh, sometimes 
you know through a mistaken identity with regards to the kingdom some people even go to the extent of thinking that we as uh, christians must establish the kingdom through our efforts so we must change culture we must change all these things so that we can bring the kingdom as though we are the ones creators of the kingdom no we can't do that uh, it's only jesus christ who can uh, establish the kingdom and we can participate with him in it uh, and so uh, it will be unfortunate if some people think that oh let's establish the kingdom uh, by uh, you know forming a nation and then uh, uh, trying to rule it by some commandments that we get out of the bible and uh, and i think some people have thought in those terms and that can become extremely dangerous and uh, that is not what jesus preached any other thoughts so me i'm looking for even more like you know as the days are passing by as new generations are coming we will be progressing in our understanding as well uh, the entire old king, kingdom concept was very old actually uh, apostle paul used or whoever used that was the concept of those days that is the language of those days they can communicate only in those language they cannot communicate in our terms so we 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 jesus have come in 21st century and we were the apostles and writers we would have written in entirely uh, different style altogether so it is such a beautiful thing uh, the kingdom of uh, sorry the god uh, and the concepts of his kingdom or whatever we are talking these are so huge and exhaustive and uh, we, uh, generation to generation we are going to explore the depths of it and god is uh, really working tremendously and he is doing a great job like you know walking through people like uh, you know all of us his chosen people are uh, opening the understanding of these concepts you know such a beautiful thing so we should be keep progressing uh, in understanding the kingdom in uh, especially you know advanced concepts excellent we have uh, just a few minutes left any other thoughts uh pastor i am uh uh, uh pauline uh, yeah go ahead and then david you had a thought too go ahead pauline uh you need to unmute yourself pauline before you uh share your thought Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry about that again. Uh, yes, Pastor. First of all, uh, thank you. Uh, today's Bible study was uh, very simple and clear. Nevertheless, we still I want to clarify on that. Um, uh, more or less, now at the end of the session, we have an understanding of the kingdom of God. So um, correct me if I go wrong. Uh, it includes everybody, including. the uh, non believers and the sinners am i right pastor okay well uh, what i would how i would put it is this way and that is that the unbelievers or the non believers and uh, everybody are entering the kingdom through when they come to believe in jesus so uh, the kingdom is uh, you know in jesus the kingdom is a reality but we enter into uh, that kingdom through our belief and participation our repentance uh, you know and accepting jesus as the one we exist in does that does that help yes 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 pastor thank you so much okay clarified right david yes you had a thought Uh, thank you, Pastor, for giving this opportunity. Um, it's talking about the term kingdom. Um, as you were talking about uh, that, uh, the term of kingdom uh, made by brutal men who try to make the nations and stuff like that. Uh, I was uh, just—I uh, got a thought that when Jesus said, "My kingdom is not of this world," uh, just a, a simple statement, um, but uh, His kingdom is beyond this world. So. i believe we need to seek that kingdom which is in christ jesus that's what i just wanted to uh give a reiteration and just to enhance our faith just wanted to check 
Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, David. Yes, that scripture is very profound. Uh, you can uh, learn many things uh, with regards to what Jesus really meant by that scripture. But yes, there is a beyond element uh, from what we see around us. But that is true. Yes. But maybe sometime we can explore that a little bit more. Okay. Um, with that, I think uh, we have uh, finished our time. Uh, for those of you who did not hear that announcement I made as we began, uh, and that is, I had mentioned that for the month of June, we will continue to meet uh, online because we are not very sure how we can fulfill all the norms and the regulations with regards to the uh, lifting of lockdown. So we don't want to get into any trouble by, you know, suddenly uh, people getting sick or whatever. So let's wait for another month. And so all the, all the worship services and Bible studies will be online. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you so much for joining today, and uh, we we'll look forward to uh, having the, the uh, of course, the worship service coming up, and then the Bible study next week. You all have a good evening. God bless you all. Uh, maybe we can end with a prayer. Um, David, would you like to end with a prayer? Thank you. Thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful time of coming together and the, knowing the very important uh, theme, your kingdom, uh, which is so quintessential to relate ourselves to you, Lord. You have given us an opportunity to know that in you, that is the kingdom. And Father, Lord, help us, each one of us, to be able to seek your kingdom and be able to uh, admonish you and and be strengthened uh, that we will be able to uh, live a life which is more pleasing to you and that your name will be honored and your lordship will reign in our hearts in jesus mighty name i pray